Good morning, everybody. Cheryl Echeverria here of Echeverria Travel, and welcome to Talk Travel News with Cheryl Echeverria. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about the first uh, few or number of mistakes first-time cruises make when they're planning their cruise. Now, I'm a travel advisor. I have no handcuffs to any particular one cruise or another. So we work with all of them, the big ones, the little ones, and all that. So um, I'm going to just get my cell phone here going so I can see you guys on Facebook that might have questions or just want to come by and say hi, because I am live on Facebook right now. So you guys can follow along with me, learn more, or if you have anything to add as well, please, you are welcome to do so. Just be kind and nice, but all the information is in the comments, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, let's see. I am ready to go here. I'm ready to go here. Okay. The first couple of mistakes that people make when going or finding a cruise is that they pick the wrong cruise line. Every cruise line is dedicated to a different client. A ship is dedicated to a big different client. Do you want a there? And there are four types of cruise types of cruise lines out there. There is our mass market cruise line, which is the Carnival Royal Caribbean, the Legion Cruise Line, and MSC. And these carry between four to 6,000 passengers. They do have smaller ships, but smaller ships are slowly being taken away and more and more bigger cruise ships are, are available to you. And these are geared to friends, family, Everybody that wants to have a more of a resort style cruise with all the dings and whistles, all the parties, uh, all the uh, different entertainment, whether you want to, like Norwegian Cruise Line was the first to come out with a freestyle cruising and Broadway type shows. Royal Caribbean has the water shows and the ice skating rink. Uh, Carnival has the Thunderstruck with uh, the Dr. Seuss and so many other activities for people of all ages and stuff, but that's not always the best cruise line for everybody. That might be uh, for a family or maybe doing a family reunion or something like that. Maybe the, you don't want all the hype at the party party parties and you want to go to the next line, which is the smaller premium lines, which is Celebrity, which is through Royal Caribbean, uh, as uh, Oceana, which is through Norwegian Cruise Line, uh, Pre uh, Princess and Holland America, those are through Carnival Cruise Line. Um, MSC kind of falls in between that mass market and that premium line. Also, premium line is Virgin. As you know, Virgin Voyages is the new adult only cruise line. Um, trying to think, uh, Cunard is the only trans, true transatlantic cruise line. It's more of uh, uh, old fashioned, traditional cruising. Uh, so if you're somebody that wants all the activities and stuff, you may want to adhere to either the mass market or the uh, premium line. Um, the difference between the mass market and premium is uh, less people on board. There are between two to 4,000 versus four to 6,000 people. They have a more of a, if you're into jazz, they are BB King, or if you're into Atlantic Records, like the version. Different types of dining options available to you on the mass market. You can have anywhere from 20 different types of restaurants, and on the mass market, you may have four or five. Uh, and on these, you do have your interior ocean view, balcony, and suites. The third one is more of the smaller cruise lines like Windstar, uh, Silver Seas, um, uh, Clipper. These are more yacht-type cruising, uh, Viking. Uh, 
less people, more refined uh, cruising. Uh, and all the, uh, the first two are geared to uh, friends, family, even Princess and Holland America are geared to you know, friends and families of all ages and all activities. Uh, so those are those types. Also, you're a lot of times people are pick, picking the wrong destination for their first time cruise. The, the three destinations you should be thinking about when doing a, your first time cruise is either the Caribbean, and that's not just the Bahamas, but it's the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, and Alaska. And those are the three proven destinations for everybody, all ages and stuff, especially with their excursions. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to get into the different seasons for cruising in our next video, which would probably be tomorrow, about, about when to book them and what time of year these cruises uh, go, because some of them all year round and some are have shoulder season, some of them have winter season. You want to see where you want to go on that. And river cruising is a totally different animal altogether. So that will have more of a different um, uh, video vlog on. So now that we got that out of the way, I mentioned the premium. The, the the other thing is when you're thinking about booking a cruise, remember uh, you start you really need to plan your vacation from door to door and not just your cruise fare because people forget so much when planning any kind of vacation, never mind the 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 room on the ship or the cruise itself. You want to think, how am I getting the cruise? Are you driving? Are you flying? Um a lot of the mass market cruise uh, cruise lines have many options that you could have your have included, or you could add on your your uh, your specialty dining, your drink packages, your Wi-Fi, your excursions. You need to think about uh, I, especially your excursions and your dining and your alcohol. I'm going to repeat this because people don't think of that when they're booking their cruise. You're just thinking, I'm booking my fare. That's the only thing I have to book. And nine out of 10 times, once you're on your cruise ship, you wind up either paying half, almost the full fare once you get on board because you didn't plan out your trip. I'm not saying plan for every single moment of your cruise, but you don't want to be shell shocked when you get that bill at the end of your cruise that you spent a what? So not everybody likes to drink alcohol. That's fine. They do have soda packages. They do have uh, drink packages that also include your coffees, specialty coffees like your Starbucks and stuff. Uh, they have specialty sandwiches. They have different things that you do with, with your drink packages. They have your excursions that... Uh, you need to think about what you're going to do when you get to cruise port. You're just not sitting on the ship. You actually decided to take a cruise because you want to see a destination once you're there. Uh, again, we're going to be doing a separate posting just on excursions and what to look out for. Uh, your specialty dining. Some people just don't want to stick to the two main dining rooms and other things at buffet. They want to try the other dining options. A lot of time it's French or Italian or the high-end restaurant and you want to have it and it's like Chinese or Japanese or whatever that cruise line is offering. You want to plan out for that and please book that early. Because if you're booking your dining or excursion book early, because once you get on the ship, it's more money to do that. And it's also more crowded to do that. So what I'm recommending to you to please make your excursions and dining uh, options available to you once you finish paying off your cruise, because you can't add it on to your cruise until you finish paying it off then you want to do that and add that on. Uh, so that, that, that's what you want to do and think about as well. The other thing is that people are not thinking about where their cabin is going to be on the cruise ship. 
That's a big thing because some people say, I just want the cheapest room. I'll worry about it when I get on board. I'm not going to be in my cruise ship that long. I'm just going to be in there to sleep. Well, I'm going to tell you, you will care once you become, become a regular cruiser, and it's very important. First of all, there's before I get ahead of myself of where your state rooms are, which are every cruise line out there, there's what's called a guaranteed room and a room that you can pick where you want your state room to be. And when I'm going over with you, or when if got, you know, if you're doing it online, which you know, online it's very confusing to see where your rooms are. And I have access to all the rooms on every ship. It's exactly where your room is going to be. Okay, a guaranteed state room means that you're just going to have a room either on interior ocean view or balcony. You will not know where your room is going to be. Probably until a week out prior to your cruise or even when you get on board what that room is. Some people who are uh, experienced cruisers say, oh, I have no problem with that. They're always upgrading me and they're also always giving me a better room. This, this is a myth that doesn't happen all the time. And a lot of times when you get on board and you ask for, and you ask for the lowest price, the lowest price is the guaranteed stateroom of that category, 10, 10, 10, okay? So that means you may get a room, let's say, right under the buffet where you hear all the dishwashers going, or you may be near the engine room, or you might be under the disco or next to the disco. I remember one time we, you know, we said, oh, no problem, we're next to the disco, we won't hear anything, we won't think this is coming from an experienced cruiser, okay, experienced cruiser. We heard that from from the from the uh, from the GJ booth all night, and uh, it wasn't fun. What you want to do is make sure when you're booking your room, you have cabinets on all sides of you. The the cabinets in between you, nine out of ten times you don't hear anything unless you have a room with noisy kids. But nine out of ten times you you don't hear anything. They're they're very well padded in between rooms so you, you want to make sure that you're in a place that you want to be if you're if you want to be near stairs or elevators no you do not hear the elevators anymore in the older ships yes you could hear them but if you're somebody with a, a mobility issue or don't want to do all the walking make sure that you're centrally located not the front of the ship the back or the back of the ship but you want to be centrally located elevators because sometimes those front elevators or back elevators don't get you to where you want to go because there's something in the middle blocking you. Also, I'm going to stress now the people that know me here locally, they know I don't use the scooter much. They know um, I'm legally blind, so I don't even use my white cane much. But on a cruise ship, when I'm traveling, I use either rent the scooter or bring my own. Because you don't realize how big these ships are until you start walking them up and back, back and forth. You know, the, the, the buffet is in the back of the ship and the theater is in the front of the ship. Or the casino is in the back of the ship or something. You're constantly walking on the cruise ship, whether inside or outside. And you tire really easily, especially if it's a full ship. You want to have that walker, a wheelchair, or scooter. Don't be a hero and spend all this money and you can't enjoy your ship, your, your cruise or your excursion. It's very important to be comfortable. Uh, they're not that expensive to get. Uh, a lot of times when I'm traveling locally, I will bring my own because that's gets into the car, but if you're somebody that uh, may be flying in or you just want to have it there when you arrive and leave it when you get off the ship, we could have that done for you as well. The same thing, uh, getting in and out of the pools on the ship, you want to be able to make sure they have lifts or roll-ins and so much more. I talked about uh, planning a trip for those people with special needs. You can take a look at some of my 
past videos and check them out about that as well. Also traveling with uh, PD dialysis or being visually impaired and traveling with a service animal. I used to have a guide dog, so I know how, what it's like traveling with uh, a service animal uh, on a cruise ship and also internationally, the, the rules are different. So please contact me about that as well. Finally, uh, what people don't think about first time travelers is your travel insurance. Now, I know that people say, I don't need travel insurance when I'm traveling. It's a scam. It's this and that. It's too much money. I have never paid more than, for both me and Nelson, I haven't paid more than $200 for the two of us to take a vacation. Now, when you get older, that might change because uh, they go by not only the total amount of your travel expenses, but also goes by your age. So the older you get, as you know, as getting older myself, is that our premiums change because of our age. And um, unfortunately, that, that's not right, but they do that. And with things in the world going on, not only COVID, but people losing their luggage, the, the flights flying in and out of places, they get canceled. Uh, detained, maybe your car breaks down on the way to the cruise port, you can't, you know, even if you leave local, something can happen and you can't get to the cruise ship and it went bye-bye and left you. They're, they're not going to say, oh, Cheryl Echeverria or Tom Jones or John Smith is late for the cruise, I'm going to wait for them. They, they have timing that they need to leave. The same thing with your excursions. Um, make sure that you book with a reliable excursion company that knows that you need to get back on the ship by at least the minimum or the maximum, actually the maximum, one hour before cruising. Okay, you don't want to be looking at your watch and you're in Rome and it takes an hour to get back to the ship and you go, oh crap, my ship is leaving in 10 minutes because you decided to walk around on your own or get an independent tour operator that uh, has to drive through traffic to get you back to the cruise ship. I, I have heard of people being left behind, but nine out of 10 times, if you have booked directly with the cruise line, they know they keep in, uh, in uh, communications with the vans, with all the tour operators that they work with to see if, the, if a train is late, if their van broke down, if something has happened, uh, that will also come into your travel insurance play as well. Uh, your travel insurance will come into play if somebody at home got sick and you need to leave. I've actually had clients that I sent to Mexico a couple of years ago, and his mother passed away, and he had to come home early. And kept, so we were able to have him contact them on the airline for the travel insurance get them flights home and also get reimbursed for the time that they were not able to use on their trip. So they didn't get a credit, but they got the money back that they paid on their trip. I've had people that have gotten hurt. Uh, not uh, any fault of their own or the cruise line, but you know, sometimes when you're on an excursion, something goes wrong. And I've actually had clients that uh, have gotten hurt. They've had their travel insurance. They actually were able to go to the local hospital and they get flown home by a medevac with a nurse and didn't have to pay the extra out of pocket. Recently, I posted on Facebook that there was a woman who was cruising at Carnival Vista. She actually got was sick before she got on the cruise ship. Uh, that's another thing. If you get sick prior to cruising, please don't go on board and get everybody else sick. Uh, neurovirus, COVID, uh, pneumonia, whatever it is, if you're not feeling well, do not bring it on board because it, even though they're outside, it's a small space and you don't want to get everybody else sick. I highly recommend that if you have not seen uh, the documentary on Prime Video, uh, my Secret Life of a Cruise or Life of Cruise Ship, take a look at that. They go behind the scenes of everything that goes on with a cruise line. 
and they do a very good job about it. The ins and outs of how clean they are, uh, timing, excursion, a lot of things that I mentioned here, you definitely wanna see, and I'm gonna put that link in the uh, description of this video. I'm, I'm gonna ask if anybody's out there watching me this morning, if you have any questions or comments, please post them here. I mean, I do see somebody is watching us. I would love to know who you are and put that in the chat box and just say hello to us. Uh, and if you have any uh, tips for a first time traveler on a cruise ship, I mentioned, you know, type of cruise line, uh, type of person you, oh yeah, your activities. What type of person are you? What, what do you like to do when you travel? Are you a foodie? Do you like to visit? all the different destinations. Are you a gambler? Are you somebody that wants to spend your day in the spa? Do you like to play games? I know a lot of these cruise lines now offer things like uh, The Price is Right, Family Feud. Uh, you know, what do you like, or, or are you a person that likes watching or listening to somebody come on the ship and do a presentation or take a camera class to help you improve your pictures of, of taking whales while you're in Alaska or, or taking that picture of the volcano in Hawaii or being on Oceana, who is famous for their food network kitchens and you can learn cooking classes and so much more. You got to match your identity to the cruise line that you're going to. You don't want to go to a cruise line that has none of those activities that you love to do. You'll be bored. Or you're not going to be, oh, this is a party ship, and I don't want to party all the time. I want to uh, expand my mind or learn something new. I just don't want to do this all the time. That's okay. That's the type of person I am when I travel. I want to learn about more about nature. I want to be, I'm a foodie. I like to taste a new drink or experience uh, a new destination. I don't like doing things the same thing all the time. So yeah, there'll be times that I'd like the party ship and then there's times that I want a new, little bit of a refined experience. And that's okay to go back and forth because you know the first cruise you may have totally loved and the next cruise line you may totally hate, but you just love cruising and you want to find that right match. So remember that when you're planning and when you're talking to a travel agent, why talk to a travel agent? We can help you figure this all out. Even if you've been on a cruise for up to a hundred times, I'm going to ask you, well, what do you like to do when you go on a cruise? Are you a people watcher? You can do that on any cruise ship. You want to try a new ship, maybe it's a new carnival celebration, which we're going to be on in on November 20th for the naming of the cruise ship, or we're going to be on Virgin Voyages, Scarlet Lady, or we're going to be on the new and the sea, seascape in December. So we have different cruises lines that we bring to you from experience of what exactly at who that experience is for. You may be thinking, well, I'm too old to go on Virgin. I'm in my seventies and I'm not gonna enjoy it. Not because Richard Branson himself, who is 72 years old, is the one that created it. Yes, he may be a little more hipper than some of us, but hey, who doesn't like to be hip and in the moment every once in a while? I'm getting a long, little long-winded, but those are the top things that I think that people make mistakes on when booking their cruise. Have a great day, Cheryl Echeverry from Echeverry Travel, 631-456-5394, reservations at echeverrytravel.com. Take care.